All right, I'm Adam, and I'm talking to Dexter and Noodles from The Offspring. How's it going, guys? It's going good, man. Cool. Uh, good. <laughs> you got that. Sharing a mic. We're sharing so, uh, a mic. A yeah. I'll pause extra long <laughs> after each question. Uh, your new album, Days Go By, that's been a f that was a few years in the making, right? Yeah, it took us about two years right. to, to make it. Did you just keep coming up with new ideas? Or? We did, we did, and then and then a lot of the songs changed over time, too. We'd, mm -hmm. we'd uh, work really hard on a song for a while and then kind of shelve it. You know, after a while, you've heard it so much, you, you lose all uh, objectivity. So you kind of right. shelve it and work on something else for a little bit and then come back and revisit those songs. Was there a lot of stuff left over that, you, you know, either incomplete or just didn't fit on the record? Not, not too much, a couple of songs. Um, you know, a lot of stuff you kind of know right away if it's working or not okay um, you know you might have this really cool riff but you can't you're, you're having difficulty making a song out of it um, so a lot of you know we might have some riffs laid around but not a whole lot of finished songs yeah. there are several different kinds of music on the album represented on the album was that intentional the intention from the outset I don't think so. Um, you know, it, we, when we go in, we, mm. you know, sometimes we'll just have an idea. You know, Dexter will come in and go, I, you know, I have this one idea mm. for a song, and it'll be a reggae song like OC Guns, and, right. you know, but it wasn't really intentional. It was kind of once we had the, all, everything, you know, all the whole rec record's worth of music, we looked at it, and there was a lot of different stuff, but it all seemed like Offspring stuff, so, right. so we mm. went with it. Yeah, it flows kind of surprisingly well. You hear a song like OC Guns, uh, you know, before a song like Dirty Magic, you wouldn't think it would work as yeah, a right. whole quite as well as it does <laughs> i can see that but yeah. but yeah it does for us it felt like it, it flowed really well you know and, and but it was dynamic enough to to keep the the listeners interested or so we hoped you know and we still hope yeah, for sure yeah yeah um t all right i'm gonna get profound for a second if you'll allow me okay all right three huge punk bands from the 90s from california you guys rancid and green day y'all broke through in a huge way in the 90s right and you all broke out of doing strictly punk stuff or ska punk stuff after your mainstream breakthrough and you've all managed to survive until today do you think until yeah. today yeah is it all okay. coming to crashing <laughs> down today <laughs> maybe tomorrow we will see yeah. <laughs> but do you think that has anything to do with your survival really with those three bands um all your willingness not to be pigeonholed or to restrict yourself to certain styles yeah you know i don't know we, you know we didn't do it for any kind of you know reason except that it's, it's fun for us you know when we when we branch into right. different yeah. territory musically um you know you could look at you know the, the uh, opposite of that would be pennywise and you know sure. um, no effects, and no effects who, who are still doing gangbusters and and right. haven't changed that much you know mm -hmm. they, they haven't changed their you know the stylistically although no effects throws a lot of different stuff out there they've done really well for themselves by mixing it up musically as well that's true pennywise not so much they play the same thing over and over again <laughs> i mean it might be the same record but it's a great record they keep they, it is no, they're song. great you know and it's and it's nice to see them still doing it with zoli and you know at the, sure. at the front right. um you know i didn't know how that was going to work for them but it seems to be working well for them stoked to see that they're still doing it and jim's still doing great stuff yeah, too. Black, I mean, Black pacific's is awesome so for sure yeah. All right, the new album. Now let's talk about us. <laughs> All right. All right, new album, Daisies Go By. Uh, first single, Days Go By. That sounds to me like the straight up rock track, really. It musically, kind of reminds me of The Cult. I don't know if you can hear that at all. Sure. Well, the, that the intro riff for sure that we revisit yeah. in the in the bridge too. Yeah, it definitely has a has a cult kind of vibe to it. You know, it wasn't it just kind of happened, but but yeah. it sounded yeah. cool, so we went with it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, good enough reason. Why'd you pick that as the first single? Why did we pick that as the first single? I think we just liked that it was a little bit different, that it was more of a straight up rock song and uh, something to, mm -hmm. it just seemed like a good song to start the record out with. It's a good fist pumping in the air kind of song. Right. Sure. Yeah. And did you title the album after the track or vice versa? Well, we did. We we're actually trying to think of a, a good album title. And uh, we weren't thinking of anything really great. And all of a sudden we thought, oh, let's just call on Days Go By. That would be easy. That makes sense. Okay. And cool. it really kind of fit, uh, you know, when you think about it, fit the record because the tone of the song has to do with, you know, not so much time passing, but people going through hard times and things getting better in the end. Do you see that as a theme of the album? Well, certainly it's a, the theme of that song, Days Go By. There's some right. songs that are very nihilistic. You know, Slim Pickens <laughs> does the right thing or rides the bomb to hell. Yeah. You know, it's not really a warm fuzzy. It's kind of an angry song. A little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Um, okay, Cruise in California. That was we heard that before the album came out. Right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of internet fans. I don't know how much you read. You know, YouTube comments that sort of stuff. Reacted with some shock to that to that track, just with a well, different style of music. Did that surprise sure. you? Or does it surprise you now if it's the first time? No, it? it didn't surprise us at all, actually. I think we kind of expected some of that, you know. Uh, that song is very reminiscent of, like, Pretty Fly, you know. We got a lot right. of crap from, from fans yeah. for that. They just, they're yeah. missing out on the joke. So, that's, that's all right. I think we would have been, you know, I think we would have been, uh, it would have been a chicken shit move if we didn't put that song on the record. So that's okay. kind of what, what mm -hmm. you know, what we were thinking mm -hmm. about it. It's, you know, it's mm -hmm. certainly not the most meaningful song lyrically, you know, on the record, but, but it's just, it's kind of funny, you know. Who's doing the autotune vocals? Is that you? Or... Uh, I, I can't really tell. Yeah, who that was, was me. Yeah. I did that one. Yeah. No, you did all the vocals. But it wasn't okay. actually yeah. autotune. I just yeah. sang perfectly in pitch. What? No, so it didn't need to be. Nobody can do that. Of, Come on. With a little bit of, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was, feeling, in there. I was feeling really good that day. Yeah. Yeah. Really? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're part man, part machine, really. That's incredible. Well, I think when you're going to do that kind of song, you got to pull out all the stops. And, yeah, yeah. And you can't grab every huh? trick there is, every mm. little kind of thing. Mm. you got it. you got to just go for it. Okay. You know? yeah. Sort of on the topic of the same song, do you guys, have you or have you ever or do you worry about punk cred or even rock cred in a more general way when no, it comes no, to putting out music not really you know that no one's going to take away from us what punk rock meant to us and still means right. to us this day i mean when we were young you know well teenagers you know trying to find our way in this world punk rock kind of helped show us the way it told us we don't have to accept less than what we want and you got to go out there and kind of fight sometimes for what you want and you get you know screw the rules forget the rules there's there's no rules so that's that's what it meant to us, and it still means that to us. Um, you know, whether or not we're punk enough for you know some of the, some of the punks out there doesn't matter. You know, we never really did fit into the punk scene, anyways. When we were playing, we were playing with a lot of really hardcore ba punk bands that didn't have a whole lot of mo you know melody to them. It was very sure. heavy music and stuff. Yeah. But we also liked songs that you could sing along to. And mm -hmm. during the '80s, early '80s, you know, the, in the mid '80s, the, the, it was mostly hardcore bands that we played with. Not a lot of melodic bands at the time. But I mean, even Bad Brains, because that's what I think it was kind of where a lot of hardcore sure. bands come from. They're not; they weren't robots. I mean, there was there was more than just rhythm. There was some sure. there was some melody there. And I think sure, yeah, but they were pretty much they weren't playing in the mid '80s when we were playing. Right, they were yeah, done already. Enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Or just on more, hiatus, more about I guess. influence. You know, people yeah. kind of forget about sort of sure. the clash. And, and, and I, so wouldn't, could make a rock I wouldn't song. list Bad Brains. Yeah. I love Bad Brains, but I wouldn't list yeah. them as one of our our biggest influences. You know, bands oh like gosh. yeah, right. definitely great band, and you know, and inspiring and influential for sure heavy too just you know i think that's what i like most about bad brains but for us it was bands like tsol ramones sure um, dead kennedys um you know that social distortion those were the bands that mm -hmm. kind of inspired us adolescence mm -hmm. you know all right moving on with the singles turning into you i think that's the latest one is that right uh, so. Yeah, we're not even sure yet. <laughs> it is. Trust me, guys. It's, okay. it's the latest single. Good, good. Yeah. yeah, you know, we played that for the first time two nights ago, and uh, and it was great. It felt really good to do it. We're stoked to be to be playing a lot more of the newer stuff nowadays. It's a cool song, and that one strikes me as it could have been on any album from Americana until now, which is it has that offspring kind of punk cool. slash rock sound. I have no question associated with it. It's, <laughs> cool. it's kind of fishing for yeah, fun no, facts or something. Like. Yeah, no, the, I appreciate that. That's yeah. cool. You know, there's, it's it's a little different because it's got this that loop going through it. Um, right. But uh, but it's still heavy and 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 you know and, and plenty melodic as well as you know. I think it's you know when we when we're you know really doing what we do well, it's you're going to result. It's going to result in a song like that turning into you. So we're sure. we're stoked with it. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. Good. <laughs> All right. Dirty Magic. He's got my back. I love years that about him. <laughs> You're a good team, you know? One microphone and everything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's like you've done this before. All right, Dirty Magic, 20 years after Dirty Magic came out on Ignition, you re-recorded it and re-released it. Why? Well, we, it, you know, that song was on Ignition, which came out before Smash, and, and only the, the, you know, really hardcore Offspring fans have gone back and listened to those first two records, and and uh, we thought that if it got more, you know, exposure, more and more people would would like it. We thought it was a, a great song that never really got its due notice. Plus, we thought we could we could do a little bit better version of it without changing the song at all. Just kind of play it better and record it better. Okay. 
It's different. <laughs> With so many different songs, I mean, somewhat, I guess call it different eras, how do you put a set list together nowadays? Yeah, we argue about that um, quite a bit, uh, usually right before we go on. And then, uh, and then Greg tells us what to play. <laughs> Greg K. <laughs> All right, so it's a system. I mean, do you have any particular type Actually, of fan in mind? You know what? Now, right, the set we did the other night was uh, mostly Pete came up with. It was largely Pete's setting it up, and then we we just you know we all kind of pitched in our, our two cents and tweak it. I'm not real great with the set list. I'll I'll play whatever. I, I love playing all our songs, so I'm like, whatever you guys think, I'll I'll play it. You know. And do you try to take so. you know a certain amount of songs from every album or? Sure, sure. Especially the you know the ones that you know the fans are, have really you know responded to. Sure. Um, you know, and we like to do you know you got to do self esteem and kids aren't all right. Some of the bigger hits. You're gonna go far, kid. You know. And, and that's cool. We love playing those, but we also want to add some deep cuts for the, you know, mm -hmm. for the hardcore fans and and for us too, mm -hmm. you know. So we have a, it's it's fun. It's 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 kind of difficult, you know. We all have our idea, ideas of which songs we'd really like to go out and play and right. which we think would might go over well. But you know, so we just kind of you know haggle we, and we, it's pretty democratic and and we get along pretty well and mm -hmm. to, for the most part. So it's not that difficult. Uh, Pete, your new drummer, he's been playing with you for a few years. I guess he's not your new drummer anymore. It's been about uh, almost six years. Five years, I think. Yeah, almost yeah. six years, yeah. yeah. He only played on a few songs, if Wikipedia is to be believed. Uh, he, yeah. he didn't play on every single song on the new record. Yeah, I think he played on about half, and then Josh played on, a, on right. about half. Uh, why is that? I mean, just still uh, some kind of initiation period? Yeah, I, you know, a lot of times if... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Josh lives about 15 minutes again. away yeah. from where we record, and if we were hitting it hard and we wanted to, mm -hmm. to get it going, we'd call Josh up, and if he was available, he'd come down and do it right then. Okay. Um, yeah. With Pete, we'd, we'd send him, you know, a demo of the song, and you know, two or three songs, and fly him in, because at the time, he was living up in Northern California, now he lives in Nashville, so oh, um, wow. just logistically, you know, I think it was, mm -hmm. you know, depended on which song, and, and you know, where Pete was, where mm -hmm. we were, do we want to do this today? Let's do this today. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. Can you believe the conditions I have to work on her? <laughs> All right, last question for you guys. You've been doing this for some years now. Do you see an end to the offspring, or are you going to be doing this into your 80s? I, I, you know, it's what we love to do, and and I imagine someday it, it'll probably all come crashing down around us. But I, I can't see when, you know, I can't foresee when that's going to happen. I love doing what we do. I think yeah. around December of 2012, it's all going to end. So, oh yeah, but not probably. just for us, for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> so the band will probably end. A and few more months of Oscar. That's ends. awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, Noodles, thanks so much for thank coming. Thank you, Adam. Great yeah, talk to my you. pleasure, man. Thanks, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too.